Hi, so I make a lot of wind turbines of various designs and the latest one we made was this one where we used bamboo and of course we've got the rose turbine and just a whole lot of them. And I often get the question asked, why don't you stop doing this and just make the best? And you know, that's a, a, just a question I don't understand. For me, arguing about something like that is a bit like arguing which is the best colour. I mean, how can there be a best colour? Well, green, I suppose, because green's the colour of all the plants on the world. Hang on a sec. No, yellow. Yellow, because yellow is the colour of the sun. Oh, no, blue. Blue. Blue is the colour of the sky. And you think, hang on, how can you argue which is the best colour? It makes no sense at all. I mean, you can have a forever colour. You can have a colour that's best for you. Nothing wrong with that. Perfectly understandable. Loads of reasons why you might like it. But it cannot be, to my mind, fundamentally the best colour because you think it's the best colour. It's just impossible to argue about something like that. Now I think like that about a ton of things. I think like that about shoes. There can't be a best shoe and the, the reason is we're all different sizes. Imagine if they just made shoes in size 10 or size 48. We'd all be walking around either crunched up or flapping our feet. So there's a range of sizes because there's a range of people. A different size is good for somebody else and rubbish for another person. Now, you might ask what that's got to do with wind turbines. Well, just like people, there's a range of places where people live with a whole host of wind styles. You might have a predominant wind blowing in one direction. I mean, there's a valley in California. The wind howls down between these hills and of course they've stuck a wind farm right there because there's a ton of wind always in the same direction and that is awesome. And those wind farms, they don't rotate at the top. Why would they? Why spend that money on a massive rotating system when the wind only comes from one direction? So having the ability to turn those is a complete waste of time for those people. If you live on the sea quite a lot of the time, you'll get the wind coming in one direction. You don't need to rotate your wind turbine, you just need to point it in the direction of the prevailing wind. Because we only live in England, we just don't get a lot of wind. We, we get occasionally gusty weather, and maybe every now and then we get a heavy wind. But most of the time, it's just pretty gentle. Actually, I believe it's uh, 12, 12 metres per second, Beaufort scale 3, light breeze. That's our average wind speed across the UK. And of course, it varies in the UK, whether you're living on the coast, the highlands of Scotland, you're living in London, if you're at the top of a tower block in London, or the bottom of a tower block in London, it will change. The wind direction, the wind strength will change. So how can there be a best wind turbine when there are just a whole range of environments in which the wind can operate and you want to capture it. To my mind it's like arguing the co that which colour is best. It just makes no sense to me. To me there is a whole host of appropriate solutions for appropriate conditions. Now people usually concentrate on the wind condition but of course there are other conditions to pay attention to as well. Like cost for instance, skill level, Desire to buy, desire to build, the aesthetics of it, your neighbours. The list just goes on and on and on about what could possibly change the wind turbine you might want to have or make. And when you think about all of those conditions, actually, that you very often people don't think about, then there'll be a best one for you, just like there's a best colour for you, a favourite colour, a favourite turbine. But that can't possibly be the best turbine for everybody. But of course, you find people arguing that there is. You find this huge argument between whether a turbine should be horizontal or vertical. To me, it's that one step over that line of crazy. In certain circumstances, certain turbines are brilliant. And in other circumstances, other turbines are brilliant. It really just depends. And of course, that can be something very difficult to get across to some people, because some people, for their mind, there's only a best colour, and it is green, and that is that. And that just is an anathema. It's just something I don't understand. Now, because there's so many of us, and because we exist in a range, and because we can't be charged 200 million for every single turbine, of course, manufacturers manufacture a single turbine that they hope will cover a whole multitude of sins. It's like shoes. You get specific sizes, 8, 9, 10, 41, 42, 43. Right, my foot is an 8, and it doesn't fit quite into an 8, it's actually a bit scrunched up. 
But I put up with that because I don't want to pay a thousand pounds for my shoes. I want to pay 20, 30 pounds for them. And so I put up with the fact until the shoe stretches to my foot shape. I accommodate the shoe, the shoe accommodates me, and it is not perfect. It never is because it must be mass produced, because there are so many of us. It's not possible to individually make that shoe to fit me. And it's the same thing with the turbine manufacturer. They make a range of turbines. And what it says on the box is a standard set of conditions in which that turbine will operate. And of course, you don't live in those standard conditions. Take your turbine home over your shoulder, scramble onto your roof, bolt it onto the chimney and get very disappointed that it doesn't produce a kilowatt hour, actually it's about 20 or 30 watts. And that's just because of the conditions in which you live. If you looked at those conditions a bit more, you probably would choose something completely different. Now, building turbines, of course, it's a whole different ball game. It's as if I were making my own shoes. If I build a turbine on my own gloves or stealing my own clothes, I am building it to fit me and my conditions. And that's what you're doing when you're building a turbine. But of course, there's a whole range of conditions that may or may not apply. Because equally, I can't talk individually to the 200,000 or so people who are subscribed to my channel. I talk in general. And of course, I try to specify that generality into areas of people who might be interested in certain aspects of it. Now, not everybody has got the thousands of dollars needed to set up a wind turbine. Some people, and I have a lot of sympathy with that because I'm one of them, don't have a lot of money, but do have time. Now, time and money are often seen as the same thing. People tell you, oh, time is money. Well, it isn't. Money is money that you have to dish out and hand out. Time is something you can jiggle around. Time is something you can manage. Time is something you can play with. I mean, I can choose whether to make a wind turbine or watch the match. Either. I don't have to worry about time in the same way that I have to worry about money. I must pay my bills. I must buy food. I must do those things. And for that, I must have money. So money and time, although they are often equated, aren't the same thing. Sometimes you can have time and no money. Sometimes you can have money and no time. You can exchange one for the other, certainly, but they aren't the same thing at all. And time is not money. Money and time can be swapped, but they're essentially different things. So you get a bit of time, a little bit of skill maybe, and you want to give this a go. Well, what do you go around building? Well, obviously there's a whole range of things you can build, and we've done a whole range of things from um, esoteric ones to um, experimental ones, to standard ones. We've done horizontal, we've done vertical, we've done them from found materials, done them from bought materials. And the reason I did this is because the skill level required to do something like that is extraordinarily low, as is the tool set. This was made with a hand hacks, hand saw, and a sander, and you can make yourself a turbine. The pole we stuck it on, we did nothing to it. We just stuck it on a pole. I sawed off a bit of pipe and stuck it on the pole. So the skill required to make a turbine like that is extraordinarily minimal. And that's the benefit of something like a bamboo turbine, is that if you don't have wonderful skill for carving a perfect aerofoil, you can grab a bit of turbine, split it with an axe, and you'll get a pretty decent job out of it. Now, of course, here in Canterbury, in the middle of this park, with all the buildings around, I get very low wind speeds. Now, I deliberately chose a motor there, that has a very low torque, because I know that that low wind speed is going to turn it. If I'd chosen a motor with a very high torque, then it wouldn't have turned, or I would have had to make the blade eight meters long in order to be able to turn it, because the torque requirement is so high for the power input of the wind that I'm actually getting. So I pay attention to my wind. Now that means it doesn't generate a tremendous amount, but neither does it take much to get it going. And one kilowatt hour every hour every day for the whole year adds up to a lot of energy. If I have to wait until I can get a wind that will turn a 20 kilowatt hour generator, I'll probably get one day out of it. So choosing which one is a matter of the environment in which I'm in. So I chose one that has a low torque and low generation, but will generate easily, so it generates consistently. If I'd chosen another one with high torque and high generation, then yes, when I get a strong wind, yes, it would have generated, and it would generate high amps. But for a short time, that's the point. Now, if I lived in an area where I got a howling gale coming across the moor, then yes, I would have built one with a high torque. 
Now, the ones I build, or have been building, obviously, are fairly lightweight, and they, they're fine lightweight because they're not standing up to tremendous winds. If I do get a wind that exceeds the generation capability or the strength capability of what I'm building, well, I'll just lock it down, put a peg in there and stop it turning. It's going to be a rare event. But if it wasn't a rare event, then I could build that more strongly. Thicker backing boards, uh, M12 bolts instead of M6. The same principles would apply and the same thing would turn. It just would need to be built more strongly because the wind is more powerful. If the wind is more powerful and I can turn a higher torque motor, I would have bolted a higher torque motor on it. But I don't. So there's absolutely no point in me doing that. If I built a heavy-duty device with a high-torque motor and stuck it up in a wind speed of 1.8 metres per second, well, it would have done absolutely nothing. And that's a waste of time and money in anybody's books. So I look at the conditions in which I want that turbine to actually work. Now, well, that means, obviously, is it's going to have to cost me something to make it, and it's going to have to produce a certain amount in order to realise its cost back. Here in Canterbury, we pay something between, uh, like, I think it's 13 to 16 pence a kilowatt hour in energy consumption, telling me how much it's got to generate over its lifetime and therefore how much I can spend on it. Now, this bamboo comes in four metre lengths and I paid 18 pounds for a four metre length. I used two metres of it, so the whole thing cost me about nine quid. Of course, the motor was salvaged, actually it was given to me by Country Automotive from a car repair they did on a fan, so that was free. And then, of course, we used the other pole, another £9, to stick it up in the air. So, all in all, that cost me two hours' work and £18. It doesn't have to generate a lot for me to actually get that back. The only thing I get back is a reduction in cost, obviously. If I want more, well, I suppose I could always build more and hang them around the building as long as they're pretty enough. But the point that I'm making is that you make decisions about what it is you're going to build based on what is good for you, what suits your condition and where you're living and you what you want out of it. I mean, you may well want a kilowatt hour out of it, but you're highly unlikely to get a kilowatt hour out of it unless you live in the right place for that to actually work. Now, the turbine manufacturers aren't trying to cheat you. They aren't a bunch of liars and schemers all after your purse money. Well, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but let's say it's not. They just do it to a standard specification when everything would be perfect. And, of course, we live in a real world where nothing is perfect, where you have to grow into your shoes rather than get the perfect fit unless you spend a million dollars on them. It is one of the reasons those turbines aren't made out of cold leaf, incidentally, because why would you bother? And why would you bother doing something that won't actually generate? You want to do something suitable to your condition. And that's the huge key about generation. Generation is not going to be the perfect solution where you find an answer, you implement that answer, and that answer satisfies you completely. There's just no way it can do that because every individual lives in an individual circumstance with individual needs and if they want to have that answer, two choices. Buy it, make it. I prefer making it. It's the thing I have real sympathy with. But because there are so many conditions, of course, we've done an awful lot of different kinds of turbines. Now, we've done some experimental stuff as well, because I'm not actually sure what's a good design. And so I'll experiment with things, looking for what might be better than what went before. And a lot of people have that bent in their mind as well, who want to experiment. So there's an awful lot of range there, and that's why we uh, do that range on the channel. Anyway, I thought I'd share that stuff with you, because I know a lot of people are interested in turbines. I know a lot of people are thinking of building their own. I know a lot of people are thinking of buying one. And the message really is, suit it to your conditions. There is no best colour. It's just what we'll do for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to subscribe.